best day of Nations League group play, we should say, because there will be still the final four playoffs and, you know, lots of stuff happening. Um, I guess yesterday I was wearing the orange Philadelphia Flyers jersey for the Netherlands. Today I'm wearing blue and mostly yellow because Sweden won and I think it was the Except for the Netherlands, maybe the other result this time around that really went the way I would actually like it. Um, yeah, so I'm in Sweden and not only do I wear uh, the Predators jersey in yellow and blue, I also have my new Sweden jersey below. I look ridiculous, I know, but such is life. Uh, I just decided I can do both. So, uh, well, we might as well get to it now that I, <laughs> you know anyway the results and if you've seen other uh, headlines, Sweden made it, they basically were almost dead and buried, almost, because they got their throw against Russia, uh, and now they are in League A, and honestly, deservedly so. I know I might not be consistent with my views, uh, but I think both Russia and Sweden would have uh, deserved it. I mean, Russia played really well uh, the one time I saw them against Turkey. I just think Sweden is the more uh, mature squad in a way. And yesterday they dominated Russia. Uh, I think. You cannot really say it any other way. Uh, Russia only had chances if there were individual errors by Sweden. And so I think um, there was all, all the ever going to be one win, except there was a freak result, which didn't happen. So uh, very deserved. Sweden was uh, more level with Turkey in Turkey. Um, but also was the better team and arguably they were even the better team against Turkey at home when they lost 3-2 uh, but they were up 2-0 and then just uh, epic collapse so you know I think Sweden was the best team in that group and um, a year from now I was saying ah the Sweden squad no talent blah 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 no talent but you know a very pedestrian squad uh, no, 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 not anymore. I actually like what the Sweden score, so it's not spectacular. And yes, they don't have the X-ray Ibrahimovic, but uh, Sweden honestly does, doesn't need that. I think Sweden was usually at its best when they played their style, which is solid in defense, nothing exciting, but you know, going forward, you also have uh, a threat. And therefore, I think Sweden deserves to go further. I really think so. They, they were the best team. Yes, they maybe have, have not dominated uh, Turkey the way that Russia did. Um, and Turkey, yeah, gotta give them credit. They, the, the win they pulled out against Sweden, uh, that was a huge result. But considering the entire group, I think Sweden deservedly went through. And I'm happy about it. I don't deny it. Sweden, while not among the very top, but I think of those middle Euro European nations, Sweden is definitely among my favorites, if not the favorite I have, as I said, I have uh, more relations to Sweden than one might think. Uh, not only was my mother born there, she's not Swedish, but she was born in Sweden. Um, some of my absolute favorite bands come from Sweden. My favorite hockey player. In the 90s, early 2000s, Peter Forsberg is from Sweden. Got to know a few Swedish people while in America, so overall, I'm happy. Uh, I feel quite comfortable <laughs> rooting for them, let's put it that way. Okay, so I got that the big result out of, out of it. This was the game that I was watching most. I yesterday I wanted sh sh shall I watch Sweden Russia? Shall I watch the goal zone? Unfortunately, the goal zone. I in the end decided on the goal zone that I get more info on the other games, but they pulled so many friendlies in there uh, that yeah, I didn't like it. I mean, France, Uruguay, great. 
it's a friendly, but I don't need to see it. Italy, USA, it's a friendly. Yes, Italy is not scoring again. Uh, yes, Mbappé got a, hopefully not a bad uh, injury. And I want to note for the France Uruguay game the jerseys. France played as I want them to play in blue, white, red. But why is Uruguay playing in all white? I would have, for once, would have liked to see Uruguay and France playing in the first kits against each other, and I think it will work because they don't give it to me. Okay, uh, enough of the friendlies. One last to Sweden, Russia. I don't get why Russia was uh, not playing in the red kit. I think that could have worked just fine. It would have looked great. I didn't like the matchup. Uh, you see me here with blue and white, uh, yellow, yellow, blue and white. I honestly have to tell you that I. It's okay in the context of the jerseys, but I think a red would have uh, suited that game much better. Personal opinion, of course. Okay. I'll do it like the last few days. Let's start in League D and again have my notes here because otherwise I'm just gonna go uh, nuts. I realized I don't recall all the results and I will continue doing writing uh, results down now that I have the magnet to hold my cell phone. There's actually a good chance for me to do that. I just broke the law, I just don't want to wait. They are all so slow here. Okay, Kosovo Azerbaijan was basically a final for um, um, League C spot with Kosovo having the advantage, uh, two points of Azerbaijan, so Azerbaijan need, needed a win. They were never even close. Kosovo beat them 4-0, uh, thoroughly dominating, making two if not three really nice goals. Uh, the first one was uh, absolute beauty, a wide shot from the corner in, in, to, in, into the net. I really like that one. And so yeah, Kosovo, I'm not saying I'm that surprised, uh, but they are the youngest nation within UEFA. I think the first played um, in the Euro 2016 qualifying. But I think with the diaspora of Kosovo players all over Europe, they were always bound to have a semi-decent squad. So for that reason, I'm not that surprised. Uh, I wanna. S I don't know exactly what the politics is. I mean, uh, they're also mostly Albanians, but I don't know what the lineage them from Albania and you know Albania uh, we said it yesterday and it's confirmed now Albania still is in League C and the question of course is could Kosovo play Albania I would think yes but uh, if you know a little bit more the politics I probably can check it myself as well but if you know I would be very happy to hear uh, what's the relationship between Albania and Kosovo I know Kos Kos Kosovo Serbia is not mixing uh, Albania Serbia is not mixing, so I would like to know what's Kosovo and Albania and is there any thought of the two nations uniting? The other game they call it the League D Classico uh, and it's exactly the types of games that I always wanted to see and I'm so, uh, it makes me giddy. Malta against the Faroe Islands. I want to see those small nations play each other and really uh, determine who is the best. 1-1, one, one, the Ferry Islands got an early lead uh, and Malta very soon thereafter equalized. So yeah, 1-1 one, one, it ends and the group Kosovo wins with 14 points ahead of Azerbaijan, 9, Ferry 5, Malta 3. Uh, let's go to League C where the big question is will Serbia pull it, pull it through. At half there was 0-0 and it was another weird jersey matchup. Serbia played at home in their white jerseys, which actually are much better than the uh, home jerseys, I gotta say. Not perfect, but much, 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 much better. With the uh, yeah, semi Serbia, some of the Russian flag here, but yeah, I, I like those jerseys. Uh, I gotta say that the uh, almost any Umbro shirt that Serbia had was better than those, and I also have to say that um, I really liked some of the Nike shirts that were produced uh, that had this cross pen, and I kind of missed it on these Serbia shirts. I think this was. Um, a unique touch for Serbia to have the cross on there. I hope they will come back to that. I mean, it was a last minute switch to uh, Puma for that reason. Uh, they probably have just a plain 
home kit that uh, doesn't do anything for me. Away kit has something on there, so I can't get on board with that one. Okay, so Serbia was nil-nil at halftime. Uh, Lithuania played away uh, in red and then Serbia in blue. Maybe they just brought the red kit. Uh, Lithuania in red looks weird to me as well, but okay. This will come in my jersey review, for sure. Uh, and then an own goal by Lithuania, Serbia quickly makes it 2-0, Lithuania gets on back, uh, but Serbia makes 2 or more, 4-1, therefore it's clear Serbia wins the group. Also deservedly so, Serbia was the best team in that group, or none. Um, and in the other game, Romania did what it had to do, it beat Montenegro, which actually could have put Montenegro in quite some trouble, because I think uh, if Romania would have won by 2, then I think Montenegro would have gone down, but that way Cyprus is on the receiving end and Cyprus goes down into League D and Montenegro stays in C. A uh, very interesting group overall, Serbia and Romania neck to neck 14 and 12. Uh, similar to the other the, between Norway and Bulgaria, Montenegro 7 and Lithuania 0. So uh, Lithuanians didn't get anything out of, out of the group and also find themselves in D. So this is like a group that has two relegated teams. Uh, before we get to the other big game last night, let me just do Portugal and Poland in League A. We already knew who is gonna go through. Um, Portugal dominated the first half, got the, got the lead, I think it was Cancelo, if I'm not uh, mistaken. 1-0 and uh, since I was watching Goals on, uh, on the German Dazon, I only have the German Dazon, German Austrian Dazon. Um, they were of course hoping for a Portugal win because that would mean that Germany is in pot one for Euro qualifying. Yep, but Poland had an attack, got a penalty, also a red card for Portuguese defender and Milik had to take the penalty twice. He shot it twice at the same corner the second time but so emphatically. I actually didn't see why the penalty had to be retaken because I, I, it was a weird angle but to me it seemed if anyone jumped into the box it was the Portuguese uh, def uh, defenses uh, at which point I'm saying okay they made the infraction uh, let this goal stand anyway Milik scored a second time um, and Portugal and Poland held on to the 1-1 one -one draw and I can almost un understand that Port Portugal didn't then go for the win. I didn't see too much of the game, but I had the feeling that Portugal kind of, they were one man down and you know, for them it was a friendly with not much meaning to it anymore. You had already the final four spots, you're hosting the final four and Poland uh, needs the one point. So you know, uh, help each other out. Poland actually got two points away from home and lost both home games. Uh, I think there was more in there for Poland. Uh, I really believe that, although if I think about it, uh, Italy had a horrible first two games and then the, the, the other two they played wonderfully. Italy easily could have gotten uh, seven points in that group. Uh, but yeah, was not to be. Uh, but I'm looking forward to Italy, honestly. I think uh, if they get a decent draw and so on, I think Italy has a good future. They just need to find a striker. And I'm sorry, Immobile seemingly is not the striker. He's not on the international level. It's a little... Uh, it's, it's obvious. There are a few players that uh, tear down everything in their respective leagues, but when it comes to the international level, they just don't fit in the system of the coach or they're not used to kind of the deeper defending or whatever. It just doesn't work. Well, and seemingly the ends uh, apparently it doesn't work for Immobile. But still, I, I honestly, I'm very excited that the Dutch won the group, but the way they are playing, I think I'm more excited about Italy. So, you know, Italy and the Dutch in Europe are my two teams, taking all the family teams out, Austria, Bulgaria. But uh, Italy and the Dutch, among all the others, tower above the rest. And I, I'm very optimistic about Italy. Uh, but yeah, they have disappointed me before. Okay, and then there's one left in League C and I almost was about to watch it. I should have just watched it because it was a great game. Scotland, Israel. Um, Israel needed just a draw, Scotland needed the win. And 
it proved to be a gold fist. Sorry. Uh, Israel took an early lead, wide range shot, uh, really nice and played. Uh, jerseys quickly, it looked weird to me, Scotland in all dark blue. Uh, I just like, they, they're like for us, they should play in, with white pants and red socks. It just, I, it just looks so much better on them. But okay, uh, all navy, I understand it. Uh, Israel played in all white. So, they take uh, the early lead, and it looks actually, actually good, but then John Forrest equalizes. Uh, I think at the 33rd and 10 minutes later, he makes it makes it 2 off of Scotland, so the game is turned around, and everyone in Hampton Park is happy. Uh, right after the half, Forrest gets a third, so he makes three goals, and he, I think he scored two goals in Albania, so he's five goals in two games, that's a pretty darn good run. It's a very isolated sample, but you know, those are the types of runs that if this can be, so let, let it get sustained for just a little bit more and he ends up at a Premier League team. I don't think anyone else uh, is picking Scots these days. But yeah, uh, it's 3-1, everything seems done and dusted, except that Zahavi makes it 3-2 with about 15 minutes to go. And Israel is threatening and they had a good chance right before uh, the 90th minute, I think the 88th, they had a really good chance that they could have converted maybe 3-3 and get it for them. I watched actually the stoppage time because of that, then I saw every, everything else decided and then I said okay let's just go there because goal zone just went to Uruguay France. I just don't get it, I don't get it, give me competitions. Uh, competitive games don't give me friendlies. I, I honestly have to tell you, I don't like friendlies. Uh, especially, I see their value for a coach. I don't see their value for um, for a spectator. Uh, if you ask me, a friendly should always be half price, regardless what. So yeah, uh, we had uh, three two. Israel tried a lot in. Um, stoppage time, there was a very weird scene because where, where there were two Israeli plays in succession with the back to goal, uh, lobbing it uh, towards the goal, but uh, Scotland, you know, it was never to the point where I said that it should have been a goal. And so Israel loses in the rain, um, and as I said in my preview to, to, to the group, it really turned out that the team that will break the home, win at home streak uh, will go through and this proved to be Scotland. And yes, I would say they deserve it. Uh, and let's be honest, Scotland among the three teams in there, in that group, Scotland is the biggest name. And it's, uh, also quite happy that they are playing in League B now. Um, I have to look at where Austria will end up um, for the next Nations League. I hope they can avoid Germany. I really, 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 really do. Or Croatia for that matter. Uh, those would be horror for us. I think I'd rather play Poland or Iceland. It's not gonna get easier. I think this was the easiest ever for Austria to get in League A. I think they have to be happy if they stay put in League B uh, next time around. That was the group stage of the Nations League. Um, I hear so many different thoughts, but I honestly have it that it's so great instead of friendlies having these competitive games. And again, if you're a League D team, you're so happy to have regular competition on your level. This raises their level. I'm absolutely convinced of that. And it gives me games that I actually would like to see, and quite a lot of them. Sorry about that. Uh, another side note, Austria qualified for the first time for the Under-21 European Championship. Uh, winning 1-0 to Greece at home. Uh, I think I'm happiest because there were two last players in there uh, that are playing the, the, the regulars. So, uh, 
I'm happy and that's a big thing for Austrian youth soccer, meaning there is something coming. So yeah, um, I'm happy now that the nation is over because those were kind of six exhausting days. You know, I'm always excited for the first three and then the next three gets a little bit because I usually get a get up early and then staying up late, uh, it's a little bit much. But I also know I cannot sleep if I don't know all the results. I'm, I am that much of a junkie. Soccer similar is sometimes with Champions League, but there I can convince myself a little bit uh, better to actually go to sleep uh, because the group stage in the Champions League. To me, the funny thing is the Champions League group stage probably has the much better soccer, but I don't find it as intriguing as most of the Nations League now. The format is exactly that there is uh, there was still quite some excitement uh, going into these six days. Now I mean it tapered off now after England Croatia. That should have been the final game. But yeah, we have, it was interesting on many levels and I'm looking forward to the next edition. I think it has to find its place. I actually think that uh, in the long run this Nations League, if the FIFA doesn't jeopardize it, this Nations League has a good chance, a really, really good chance of superseding a European Championship eventually. Uh, because it will it could get valid more, but you know, this is, I'm talking 20 years from now, something like that. It has to have, it needs to run a few more times. Alright, let me know what you thought about yesterday's games, uh, about the results in the Nations League. Um, how you like the Nations League so far, and yeah. Um, any other thoughts that you might have on, on the Nations League. I think it can be improved, but I think all, overall it works fine. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.